In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts for penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of the Lord's Paschal Mystery, that it is to say of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, of all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may also have a share in his resurrection and in his life. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ the King and exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus and his disciples drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find an ass tethered and a colt, and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them here to me. And if anyone should say anything to you, reply, The master has need of them. Then he sent them at once. This happened so that what had been spoken through the prophet might be fulfilled. Say to daughter Zion, Behold, your king comes to you, meek and riding on an ass, and on a colt, the fowl, the beast of burden. When Jesus went and did as Jesus had ordered them, they brought the ass and the colt and laid their cloaks over them, and he sat upon them. The very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and strewed them on the road. The crowds preceded them, and those following kept crying out and saying, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was shaken and asked, Who is this? And the crowds replied, This is Jesus the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, like the crowds who acclaim Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forth in peace. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross. Grace us grant that we who heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue, that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning he opens my ear, that I may hear, and have not rebelled, have not turned back. 
I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
passion narrative according to the Gospel of Matthew. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that time on he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says, My appointed time draws near. In your house I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him, one after another, Surely it is not I, Lord. He said in reply, He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and giving it to his disciples, said, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is the blood of my covenant, which will be shed on behalf of many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, from now on I shall not drink this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it with you new in the kingdom of my Father. Then, after singing the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, This night all of you will have your faith in me shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will disperse, that after I have been raised up I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him in reply, Don't follow me, how have faith in you shaken, my name will never be. Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples spoke likewise. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took along Peter and two of the sons of Zebedee, and began to feel sorrow and distress. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch with me. He advanced a little and fell prostrate in prayer, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. When he returned to his disciples, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, So you could not keep watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing a second time, he prayed again. My father, if it is not possible that this cup pass without my drinking it, your will be done. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open. He left them and withdrew again and prayed a third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold, the hour is at hand when the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. Look, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests and the elders of the people. His betrayer had arranged a sign with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one arrested. Immediately he went over to Jesus and said, Hey, Rabbi. And he kissed him. Jesus answered him, Friend, do what you have come for. Then stepping forward, they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. And behold, one of those who accompanied Jesus put his hand to his sword, drew it, and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its sheath, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think I cannot call upon my Father, and he will not provide me at this moment with more than twelve legions of angels? But then how would the scriptures be fulfilled? which says that it must come to pass in this way. At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, 
If you come out against me as a robber with swords and clubs to seize me, day after day I sat, sat in the temple teaching, yet you did not arrest me. But all this has come to pass that the writings of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus led him away to Cyphus the high priest, where the scribes and elders were assembled. Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the high priest's courtyard, and going inside he sat down with the servants to see the outcome. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward who stated, This man said, I can destroy the temple of God and within three days rebuild it. The high priest rose and addressed him. Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I order you to tell us under oath before the living God whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him in reply, You have said so. But I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and come in on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has blasphemed. What further need have we to weep of witnesses? You have now called the blasphemy. What is your opinion? They said in reply, He deserves to die. Then they spat in his face and struck him, while some slapped him, saying, Prophesy for us, Christ. Who is it that has struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. One of the maids came over to him and said, You too were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it in front of everyone, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. As he went out to the gate, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, This man was with Jesus the Nazarene. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the name. A little later, the bystanders came over to Peter and said, Surely you too are one of them. Even your speech gives you away. At that, he began to curse and swear. I do not know the name. And immediately a cock crowed. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had spoken. Before the cock crows, she will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. When it was morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that Jesus had been condemned, deeply regretted what he had done. He returned the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? Look to it yourself. Flinging the money into the temple, he departed and went off and hanged himself. The chief priests gathered up the money, but said, It is not lawful to deposit this in the temple treasury, for it is the price of blood. After consultation, they used it to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. That is why that field, even today, is called the field of blood. Then was fulfilled what had been said through Jeremiah the prophet, and they took the thirty pieces of silver. The, val the value of a man with a price on his head, a price set by some of the Israelites, and they paid it out for the potter's field, just as the Lord had commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and he questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, you say so. And when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many think they are testifying against you? But he did not answer him one word, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, the governor was accustomed to releasing to the crowd one prisoner whom they had wished. And at that time they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas, so when they had assembled, Pilate said to them, which one, of, which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus called Christ? 
for he knew that it was out of envy that they had handed him over. While he was still seated on the bench, his wife sent him a message. Have nothing to do with that righteous man. I suffered much in a dream today because of him. The chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas, but to destroy Jesus. The governor said to them in reply, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? They answered, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. But he said, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he was not succeeding at all, but that a riot was breaking out instead, he took water and washed his hands in the sight of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. Look to it yourselves. And the whole people said in reply, His blood be upon us and upon our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. But after he had Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak about him. Weaving the crown out of thorns, they placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat upon him and took the reed and kept striking him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon. This man they pressed into service to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he had tasted it, he refused to drink. After they had crucified him, they divided his garments by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And they placed over his head the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and the other on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself if you are the Son of God, and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him and said, He saved others, he cannot save himself. So if he is the king of Israel, let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusted in God, let him deliver him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the Son of God. The revolutionaries who were crucified with him also kept abusing him in the same way. From noon onward, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lemma sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, This one is calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran to get a sponge. He soaked it in wine, and putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to save him. But Jesus cried out again in a loud voice, and gave up his spirit. And behold, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, rocks were split, tombs were opened, and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tombs after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and the men with him who were keeping watch over Jesus feared greatly when they saw the earthquake and all that was happening. And they said, Truly, this was the Son of God. There were many women there, looking on from a distance, who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him. Among them were Mary Magdalene, and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was himself a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be handed over. 
Taking the body, Joseph wrapped it in clean linen and laid it in his new tomb that he had hewn in the rock. Then he rolled a huge stone across the entrance to the tomb and departed. But Mary Magdalene and the other Mary remained sitting there facing the tomb. The next day, the one following the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember that this impostor, while I was still alive, said, After three days I will be raised up. Give orders, then, that the grave be secured until the third day, lest his disciples come and steal him and say to the people, He has been raised from the dead. This last imposture would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, The God is yours. Go secure it as best you can. So they went and secured the tomb by fixing a seal to the stone and setting the guard. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ. So our Lord enters into Jerusalem on a colt. And the people lay palm branches down, saying, Hosanna in the highest. As 21st century Fragvillians and Ashlanders, <laughs> okay, that might not mean much to us, but to a first century Drew, that was a big deal. It's making allusions to the book of Psalms, Psalm 118 to be uh, in particular, where that is a messianic psalm. That one day, okay, in the midst of the desolations that the people of Israel has been facing, in the midst of, of having them exiled and having them lose their land, Psalm 18, 118 that is, is a psalm of promise and hope. That one day your king, God's king, will come. And he'll be riding on a colt. And they'll be laying down palm branches. And so you can see the, the hope and the promises and the excitement of the people As today, Jesus enters into Jerusalem in that very manner, with the donkey, with the palms, crying out, Hosanna, son of David. And that image of the Messiah is a combination of the king image, the Messiah image, and also a priestly image. Because the Messiah was not only going to be a king, but he was also going to be a priest. A priest that was going to provide God's lamb sacrifice that will truly take away the sins of the world. That lamb that Abraham was waiting for when he was asked to sacrifice his son Isaac, when he said, Isaac, God will provide the lamb for sacrifice. That lamb has arrived, though the people don't know it. Because Jesus, as he processes into Jerusalem, his eyes are fixed upward, not only to upward to God the Father, but they're fixed upward literally physically, geographically, Upward to the top of Jerusalem where the temple sat. Because he's not only going to be the king, the priest, the Messiah, but he's also going to be the lamb of sacrifice. So today, Jesus is going to his place of sacrifice. And so in our liturgy, in our masses, the priest at the beginning of mass processes towards the altar of sacrifice, the priest who acts in the person of Christ, mimics Christ's entrance into Jerusalem and towards the temple and towards the altar, the priest moves towards the altar himself to make present that one sacrifice. And then during the offertory in the Mass, people bring forth what? The gifts of bread and wine. They bring it towards, process towards the altar to present the bread and wine that will be transformed into the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. For what? For the offering, for the sacrifice to the Father. And then towards the end of Mass, you, the people, come forward to receive Holy Communion. They receive the Passover lamb and then partake of themselves by consuming the body of Christ. They become part of the sacrifice. But notice how you also possess, come forward towards the altar. And then at the end of Mass, you possess out. After you have been fed by the sacrifice of the Passover lamb, you are then sent forth into the world. Now, right now, we're not doing any of that. (laughs) Okay. That's the unfortunate thing. 
So with all this in mind, okay, that we can't come to the altar and then we can't literally go out into the world, okay, here's an opportunity to retreat, okay, to retreat inward, especially during this time of Holy Week. Here is an opportunity to develop a prayer life and to really enter into Holy Week because how many Holy Weeks in the past years are they just like a regular part of our life? We go to work and we do our regular things and we take our kids to events. Holy Week just seems like another week. Now is the time, 2020, while we are suffering and while we are scared and while we literally can really truly feel the cross now. Like, here's a time where we can really truly say, yeah, I am carrying a cross right now. Each and every one of us can say that right now. Here's a time now to enter into Holy Week. So throughout this week, I'm going to post, okay, one-hour videos, okay, of the Blessed Sacrament, of mattresses. Take an hour out of your day. Turn the TV off. Go to a quiet place in your room. Take a walk. Upload, download, whatever you call it, an hour of just the monstrance of the Blessed Sacrament and retreat from the scariness of life right now. Retreat into this Holy Week and walk with our Lord as he moves from Palm Sunday to the inner room on Holy Thursday to Golgotha on Good Friday and then to the empty tomb and then Easter Sunday. Whatever the reasons why this is happening, that's God and that's his mystery. But now is an opportunity to really take Holy Week seriously. We really now have that chance. Let us not squander that opportunity. May God bless you. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in God's goodness, we now present to him our prayers and our petitions. For the church all around the world, following the Savior during Holy Week, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our Lord, prayer. prayer. For peoples of all races and nations who seek peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer mental, physical, or spiritual anguish, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a spirit of penance, reflection, and gratitude during these chosen days, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer from the coronavirus, for their families, and those who provide care and comfort to the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of the faithful departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, and for all our intentions spoken and unspoken. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, may you answer these prayers and petitions of ours in accordance with your will, which we make through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not marry it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once and for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so of all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Alfred, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also, Lord, our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who are pleased you throughout all the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Grace us, we grant peace in our days. That by the hope of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church. In grace we grant our peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say your word, my soul shall be healed. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle, be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads for the blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, from whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked, and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you, may with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.